Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Rob Goodman, and I am the senior pastor here at Zion Freedom Fellowship in Westminster, Maryland, in the good old U.S. of A, the United States of America. Praise be to God this morning. It's so good to have you all with us this morning. We pray that you're uh, doing well, that you're blessed, and that you're filled with the life of God today. Amen. Amen. God is so good. You know, we are the unstoppable people of God. We cannot be defeated. It is impossible for you and I, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, to be defeated because Satan has been ultimately de been defeated by Jesus. So I have a great message for you today. And before we uh, get into that message, we're going to pray and just uh, seek the Lord's counsel, his wisdom, his spirit, and ask him for his anointing. But the title of today's message is, What is CRT? What is it? Well, I'm going to explain it to you in a minute, the real truth of it all, according to the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and honor and glory because you, Father, are our God. Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we have been born again by the Spirit of God. And you, Lord, now live inside of our bodies because we are your temple. We are your dwelling place. You live inside of us. Lord, may we be forever conscious of that fact. Lord, sometimes we forget. We get bogged down with the cares of this world and the things and the uh, difficulties that are going on. But Lord, you want us to keep our minds upon you. You want us to stay focused on Jesus. And Lord, we ask you right now that the wisdom of Almighty God would flow through my voice today and bless the people that are watching in every nation, Lord. Lord, let the word of God go forth through these airwaves today in the name of Jesus. We bind Satan from interrupting any broadcast in Jesus' name. We clear the cyberspace right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Satan, we command you to take your hands off of this live stream today. You have no authority. We bind you and we cast you out. For whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. So Lord, we thank you for the authority that you have given us as believers. We praise you and we worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Come on, people. Let's just worship the Lord. Wherever you are right now, just begin to worship him. Open up your lips and begin to praise him. Jesus, you're so wonderful. Oh, I worship you, Jesus, the king of glory. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And you are unfolding your plan for the church right before our spiritual eyes. Lord, we ask you to open up our spiritual eyes and our spiritual senses, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. May we understand who we are in Christ Jesus, that we may trod upon this earth and deliver the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for soundness of mind, body, soul, and spirit. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we do not trust in our own strength. We trust in the anointing of Almighty God. Lord, the anointing of God is upon your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, King of glory. We worship you. We will sing a new song unto the Lord. We will worship, bow down, and adore him. For there is no one like our God. There is no one like our Jesus who comes and he frees us because he's given us the power of his name. We shall never be the same. Because of who he is in us, we are transformed, transformed right now in the name of Jesus. Let the glory come upon you. 
Let the glory come upon you. Let it rise up out of your spirit because the rivers of living water will flow out of your spirit. And let others come and drink from that water. Let others come and feast at the table that has been spread before us right smack in the middle of our enemies. Lord, you are God. You are God and the devil has been defeated. We are the ones who reign upon this earth, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you are bound. You are bound, you are defeated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. For I, the Lord your God, am in your midst. I am here with you now. I am ever-present help in the time of trouble. Do not despair and do not grow weary, my sons and my daughters, for I have invaded you with my presence and my glory is going to burst forth from the inside of you. The rivers of living water will flow and you will see great harvest and great revival. Continue to meditate upon these truths. Continue to meditate and come up into the glory realm. Come up here where I am. Come up higher, says the Lord. Come up higher. Come up higher. And you will see with the eyes that I see with. You will speak with the voice that I speak because I will speak through you. I will proclaim my victory, my power, my authority, and the mysteries of the kingdom of God in which I have enlightened you with. Yes, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but them that are without it is not been given. But you are my people. You are my people and the sheep of my pasture, and I will do a mighty work in you. For this is what the Lord speaks to his church this day. Thank you, Lord. Well, folks, I don't know about you, but I sense the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Very, very strong, a very powerful, strong anointing. So just receive it. Just receive it. The Lord is speaking to you very clearly right now. Some of you he's speaking to because you have allowed the glory to come upon you. There's great wisdom in the spirit of God. In the glory, there's wisdom. In the glory, there is no defeat. In the glory, there's soundness of mind, body. In the glory, you will receive everything that I have promised to you, the Lord says. You will receive. Receive right now. Receive, receive, receive. For I am here to bless you. I am here to bless surround you with my angels from heaven yes they are at your command even as they are at mine you are seated with me in the heavenly places don't ever forget who you are in me oh thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh by the way just a reminder i will review all the comments after we go offline, I see many people are writing things right now. But I want to remind you also, please go on. Once the video gets uploaded, my son Ryan usually uh, embeds it so it can be passed on to many different people. And if you can go on there and make sure you like and please leave a comment. It just uh, it helps YouTube to know how many people are watching and other people will be able to see it as well. Okay, can I ask you all to do that? That would be really uh, great, I think. And uh, we, we're receiving so many testimonies, so many testimonies from pastors in different countries. And God is doing a major work, a wonderful work. There is a pastor in Pakistan who's been uh, teaching my messages to her people. 
And she says that many people are being added into the kingdom. And we just praise God for that. I never imagined that we would ever have a ministry like this, that God is blessing people all over the world. I know it's not the same as meeting together, which we will do, and we'll figure out, you know, how to get all that done. But I just know that God has called us to do this for a time, and we will continue as long as he wants us to. Amen? Well, let's get to the message. Amen? Praise be to God. God is so good. All right. Today's message. CRT, what is it? Well, we all know that uh, the CRT in the world means, um, oh my gosh, it just went out of my mind. Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank. You. Anyway, but I've got a new name for it. CRT, Christ Racial Truth. Amen. That's what it is. Praise be to God. We're going to look at the gospel today and we're going to understand that you and I are not a part of critical race theory. We're not a part of that. You know, Pam was sharing with me this morning, my wife, how Martin Luther said that we are to, he made, was very famous for saying what he said about, we respect character, not the color of man's skin. You know, it doesn't matter what color we are. And we're going to go into scripture today and we're going to understand truly what Jesus said that we are. And Christ's racial truth is absolutely very, very powerful. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Martin Luther King, that's his name. I'm sorry. I'm just, I feel the anointing so strong. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, you're so good. All right, let's get into scripture because then we're going to figure out what's going on here. Let's turn to um, Philippians 3, 18, Philippians chapter 3, verse 18. And I know that the book of Philippians I always think about uh, Rita, who's on today, uh, Rita Andrew, that has always been one of her favorite books because it, it's so much about the joy of the Lord. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful scripture. Praise be to God. All right, let's go to chapter three of Philippians, and we're going to start reading at the 18th verse. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. You know, CRT that's going on in the world, and they're trying to teach it in schools, to our young people, it is a division causing thing that is saying so many vile things that are not according to scripture. You and I are to follow what the Bible has to say about race. And we're going to look at some scriptures today that will teach us about this. So he says their glory is in their shame who set their mind on earthly things. You know, a man or a woman that is not born again by the Spirit of God, they do not understand the things that are spiritual. They have no way of knowing or understanding. Because why? Because they've not been born again of the Spirit of God. And Jesus said, unless you are born again, you will not enter in or see the kingdom of God. Amen? You will not enter in or see the kingdom of God. But because you and I have been born again, we can see into spiritual things. Just like the Lord said a few minutes ago, we can see with his eyes, hear with his ears, and speak with the authority of his voice. We are his ambassadors in this earth. 
We're from a distant country. We're from a heavenly country, a heavenly realm, which is heaven. Praise be to God. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? That is so wonderful. All right. For our, the believers, he, when he says our, our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly await for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this next verse, 21. Who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. You know, that is so cool, folks, because as we commit our way unto the Lord, he will transform us. You know, the Lord is not interested in being, um, us being religiousized and all that kind of junk, because that won't change you. But when you're transformed, you'll be changed. And, you know, the Lord is moving very, very quickly because time is short. You know, I was listening to Dr. Kevin uh, Zadai, and Zadai, and he was sharing about how the Lord spoke to him and said, I don't have the time that I had with Moses. You know, my gosh, Moses was in the desert for 40 some years before he came back to redeem the people from Egypt. And just think about that. But now God is moving quickly. He told uh, Kevin that he does not have that much time, that time is short. So I believe we're very near the coming of the Lord. That's why all this garbage is happening in the world. You know, Satan the Lord spoke to me this morning. He says, Satan has pulled out all stop, stop, uh, all, all of his stoppages. He's pulled them out. He's just completely pulled them out. And he is operating in full force. So what does that mean? We better put on our armor every day. We better be prepared. We met, better be mindful of heavenly things and who we are in Christ Jesus. Because God has chosen us. He's chosen you. He's chosen me. He's chosen us to be victorious. We can't be anything less than what Jesus was. I want the fullness of God to dwell in my body. I want my mind to be changed. I want my thoughts to be changed. I want the things I speak to be changed. I want total transformation. And we're transformed how? How are we transformed? By the renewing of our mind. That we, we might, might prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Praise be to God. God is awesome, is he not? He is so, so very awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, so think about this. Once we are born of the Spirit, we are no longer of this world. Whether we are black, white, American Indian, Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Jewish, or any other race, our citizenship is in heaven, and we are now one in Christ. We are no longer of this world. So we need to look at one another. You know, when we meet a person of a different color, a different maybe a different race or a different, maybe a tribal person or something of like that. We need to see them through the eyes of the spirit and love them. You know, love is the fulfillment of all things. We must love them just the same way that Jesus loved them. And we have the power to do that. And Paul speaks about let love, let love have its perfect way in our in our way in our midst let love do all things in love amen praise be to god thank you jesus god is so good all right let's go to first peter chapter one first peter chapter one
and what first am I looking at here? All right, let's go to verse 20. And this is uh, uh, Peter, he's talking about Jesus. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Praise God. Since you have purified your souls, how do you get purified? How does your soul get purified and transformed? In obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren. See, love is the key. Love is the key. So we're purified through obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Powerful words, aren't they? Very powerful. Then he says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. See, you got born again by the word of God. I think it's really important that when you and I share about Jesus, that we incorporate speaking scriptures because we know that the word of God is a, a quick two-edged sword. It pierces the division of soul and spirit, the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the intents and the thoughts of a man or a woman's heart. So the word of God, when you speak it, when you speak it, it will carry forth a message to that person because only our words don't have that power if we're just speaking in natural terms. But if we're speaking by the spirit of God, those words will enter into their heart, especially when you're speaking scriptures. Praise be to God. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of the man is like the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away. But, now here's the punchline, the word of the Lord endures forever. Now, this is the word by which the gospel was preached unto you. Isn't that amazing? So we are born again. By the Spirit of God. And, you know, Peter speaks here. I mean, he walked with the Lord. I mean, look at the transformation that happened with him. I mean, it's just amazing. You know, I love Peter and the Chosen. Oh, by the way, by the way, I want to mention about tomorrow night, if you have the Chosen app, probably be on YouTube as well. I received a message from Dallas that tonight at 8 o'clock, there's going to be a live broadcast, the whole Christmas program that was out in the movies. And, you know, they, they brought in like $10 million. It's amazing. Maybe even more. It's still showing in theaters, but he's opened it up so people can watch it on the, um, everybody can watch it at the same time um, tonight at 8 p.m. So if you're up to that, I would ask you to tune in if you got Wi-Fi wherever you're living. It'd be great if you could watch that. Amen. All right. Praise be to God. And what happened to my... I just lost my notes. One second, folks. So the word of God saves our soul. The word of God will fix what's wrong with your soul. And that, that's where our problem lies. You know, when you think about it, this whole critical race theory is bad, stinking thinking. It's bad, stinking thinking. 
it comes from the devil, the father of the, you know, the father of lies. And that's who's feeding it to our younger generation, to many people who don't know the Lord. And through prayer, you and I will have victory. I truly believe there's a great harvest coming. But we need to be transformed first before that will actually happen. God is waiting for his people. And like I said earlier, time is speeding up. God is moving in a mighty and powerful way. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, and Paul calls it a tent, this tent is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands or human hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Amen. So we must understand that we have been born from above. Now let's go down to verse 17. Let's, let's look at verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Think about that. When we look at people, we're not just looking at them in the flesh. You know, I believe as we pray for people, we can prophesy things over them according to the word of God. And like I had shared last week, pray scripture over people. That is a very powerful mechanism of the Lord. You prophesy according to scripture over your family, over your relatives, over whoever you want to pray for. And God will honor his word because he watches over his word to perform it. Amen. Praise be to God. We regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. So even Jesus, even though he was once in the flesh, he's now in his resurrected body. And praise be to God. I mean, he has appeared to so many people. He's appearing to Muslim folks left and right in dreams. He's appearing to them. In their daily routines. I mean, this is just amazing to me. It's amazing. So when you look at someone, you know, when I was a younger Christian, you know, I remember Pam and I went to a Keith Green memorial service down at the um, Baltimore Civic Center. And his wife was there. Uh, Youth with a Mission was there. And at the end, they had an altar call for people to give themselves to missions. You know what I did? I sat in my chair with my hands folded. Pam was the one that stood up. And I just did not have a love for, for missions at that point. Boy, God has, how God has changed me over the years. And now I have such a love for the people of other nations. You know, the Pakistani people, the Indian people, you know, people from Europe, people from South America, because I don't know anyone according to the flesh anymore. I see them as valued souls that God created to live forever. But because of Adam's sin and his transgression, they are dead in sin and they need to be redeemed. And the Lord wants to redeem them. 
He wants to change them. And he's going to use you and me to bring this about. I'm amazed when I think about in the past how many people that I shared the gospel with and then come to find out that they were saved and born uh, filled with the spirit of God. I was just like, wow, never would imagine. Remember, I've told you about that headbanger guy. You know, I ran into him at the Rock Church one time and he hugged me and it was just like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, he was one wild man, let me tell you. Oh my gosh. But, you know, God's power will transform people and renew them. That's what the gospel is all about. Gospel means good news. We don't have any evil news. Yes, we have to speak the truth about what's coming. And we may be persecuted. Why do we get persecuted? It's because people don't understand. They don't understand. And the spirit that's in them is fighting against them getting saved. Satan doesn't want to release his people. But they really belong to God. Because of the blood of Jesus, you and I can penetrate the kingdom of darkness. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, according to Matthew 18. It will not. It will not prevail. The kingdom of hell is completely defeated. And so is all of Satan's tactics. His mandates that he's trying to put upon mankind in our in our culture presently. I mean, what our government is trying to do is total evil, brothers and sisters. It's total evil. But you and I, we must do that which is right and obey the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. So he said, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. Old things. What are old things? Smoking, drinking, drugs, sexual fornication, adultery. All those things are old things. Why? Because you're now a new creature in Christ. Now, the anointing upon you as you submit to that and as you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, you will exercise authority over those things. I can't change myself, brothers and sisters. You know, I have a lot of flaws in my life, but I can't change them. Only God can. And if I submit to him and stop fighting, just submit to God and let him do it. Invite you. Stop Fighting in your own strength. Stop trying to overcome on your own. Because you can't do it. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Submit to God. And he will flee from you. That's right. I'm talking about you. Every one of you. Don't have the mindset that the devil has more power than you do. That is a lie from hell, brothers and sisters. You have got more power than Satan would ever imagine. And the, the real truth of the matter is, is that you've got that power now. Use it. Deploy the truth. Put the truth into action. Jesus said, by taking heed to his word, you will be free indeed. Amen? You will be free. So I proclaim all the time, Lord, I thank you that I'm free. I thank you that my body's well. You know, I was telling my wife this morning that I have been seeing, you, you, many of you in my church know that I've got a lot of physical um, things that I'm dealing with and have for a lot, of, a lot of years. But he's not taken away my hope of receiving complete and total healing. I envision myself jogging around Westminster. I envision myself jumping up and down, riding a bike. Using ice, I used to love to ice skate when I was young. I loved it. And, you know, I look at the figure skaters of today and I thought, boy, that would really be nice. And the Lord said, well, why can't you do it? 
And I began envisioning that and proclaiming it over my body. Praise be to God. Man, God is awesome. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold all things. Everybody say all things. All things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us unto himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us that ministry, brothers and sisters, that we can reconcile people together because we have the ministry of reconciliation. Isn't that amazing? Let God use you where you are. When you go to the grocery store, when you go to the bank, when you go to gas, you know, whatever. When you're in the doctor's office, let God use you. And that's something that I often pray, Lord, how can, how can you use me today when I go someplace, this and that and the other? I was able to share the gospel with the people who did my CT scan the other day. You know, I had them in the room helping get on the table, and I told them how much Jesus loves them. They got real silent. I could tell it was impacting them. But you know, we're the truth bearers. Amen. And we have a message to deliver to others. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Wait, time is rolling by here, is it not? So he's given us the ministry of reconciliation that that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. Isn't that wonderful? You know, there are no sins that are being held against you unless you're living in habitual sin right now. Then you're opening up the door for the enemy's attack. But God is not imputing or holding against you, righteous servant of God. He's not holding your past failures against you. It's all been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Now, God knows everything, you know. I know we'll all stand before the Bema Seat of Judgment one day where we'll be judged for our works. It's a work judgment, not a sin judgment. Amen? So you and I must be transformed, be changed. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he has made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be made sin for us, that we might become, or the King James said, be made the righteousness of God in him. Isn't that great? See, we're not sinful people anymore. It's been washed away by the blood of Jesus. We are men and women of God. And God is going to use us. You know, there's no, there's no, what's the word I'm looking for, Lord? There's no holding back of the spirit of God anymore. God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And I'm excited about what is coming. Because we're living in the culmination of the ages right now. And, you know, my, 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 my heart aches for religious people. People that go to church every week and they're not changed. You know, it's just like Kenneth Hagin used to say, you can, you can walk into a, a barn, but it's not going to turn you into a cow. You walk into a church, it's not going to turn you into a Christian. You must be born again and receive what Jesus did for you. Religion don't cut it with God. It just doesn't cut it. Amen. 
All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Get a little sip here, wet my whistle. Lillian, if you're watching, if your mom might be watching with you, I'm drinking the, your mom's coffee that she brought back from South America, Colombia, and it's some good stuff. It is some good Joe, let me tell you. I really enjoy it. All right. Let me go back to um, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, for this very purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God does not sin. Now, why does, why does John say that? Why does John say that? Whoever is born of God does not sin. Because we've been redeemed. We're no longer sinners. Right? We've been redeemed. We don't sin. Now, we may fall short of the glory of God, and we may repent of it. Washed away. Washed, washed, washed. God will not hold your sin against you. Because God would be unrighteous and unjust if he did, because the scripture says that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all sin. Jesus Christ is our Passover lamb. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Whoever is born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Isn't that amazing? I think that's so cool. I'm excited. I'm not a sinner. I don't have to sin. But I must continually submit myself to God. Continual. Because there's still a battle going on between flesh and spirit and even the soul, soul man. Remember I've taught, with, taught you all many times how we've got holes in our soul. When I was teaching about the building of the walls in Nehemiah, the enemy would get through. Every city was built with walls around it and the watchman would stand on the walls and alert when the enemy was coming but as long as your walls don't have any holes in them the enemy can't get in and that's what we need to understand about our soulish nature god will transform it if we allow him to amen i tell you that that gets me excited because when you see yourself changing, you don't have to be depressed because of your failure anymore. Failure's gone. Out the window. Gone forever. I am not a failure. I am the righteousness of God and Jesus Christ. And if God cannot fail and God lives in me, I cannot fail. Do you agree with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. There's love again. 
Mm, mm, mm. Man, I'll tell you what. That is some good stuff. That's some good, good stuff, brothers and sisters. Praise be to God. Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. So, thank you, Lord. John chapter 3. All right, I'm going to read through this, starting in verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. You know, he, he had an openness with Jesus. And I love how they did this scene in The Chosen, where him and Jesus met in this upper area and Jesus agreed to meet him because Jesus knew that he was open to the gospel. I mean, it's just amazing when you think about it. Imagine how many people that Nicodemus, how many people he affected in Judaism at that day. I mean, it's just amazing when you think about it. And he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Because no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, or the King James says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Again, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you can hear the sound of it, but cannot tell what, where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Isn't that amazing? You know, the world cannot understand us. How can they? Because they don't know God. But when you meet a Christian and you find out that they're born again and filled with the Spirit of God, there's an instant connection. Is there not? It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Then Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are you a, le a teacher of Israel, and you do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And see, look, look what Jesus says here. The Son of Man who is in heaven. Jesus wasn't in heaven right then when he was talking to Nicodemus, but he knew where he was from. So technically, he was speaking as he still was in heaven because that's where he came from. It's amazing to me. It's amazing. The scripture will blow your mind. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Why doesn't Jesus want to condemn? Because he paid the price for our sins. How can he condemn us? How can God condemn us? How can the Holy Spirit condemn us? Now the Holy Spirit will con convict us. He'll speak to us. But he does not condemn us. Big difference, folks. Big difference. 
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Here's what real condemnation is. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Praise God. Isn't God awesome? Isn't he awesome? Got a few more scriptures and we'll get finished here. All right, let's go to Acts 22. Acts 22. And let's look at verse 26. When the, when the centurion heard that, he went and told the commander, saying, Take care what you do, for this man is a Roman. Paul had been arrested. Then the commander came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman? Paul answered and said, Yes, I am. The commander answered and said, With a large sum, I obtained this citizenship. Now listen to what Paul says. And Paul said, but I was born a citizen. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Here this other guy had to pay for his citizenship of Rome. But this man, Paul, was born a citizen. And they had to release him. Isn't that amazing? You and I are born from above. We are no longer of this world. We have been born from heaven we will go to heaven. We must be born again. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 14. I have two scriptures in Revelation, and then we will end with prayer. Revelation 14, and we're going to look at verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 5. And let's look at verse 9. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation so you know folks you and I are people of God and people of heaven we are no longer of this world how are you living your life today do you know that you're saved do you know that you're born again do you know that you're on your way to heaven or do you have a tremendous fear of dying? I remember when I was a teenager, I'd almost died a couple times as a kid. I was beaten pretty much to death in a schoolyard in the woods one night. November 11th, I was like 15, years old I mean it was just it was a terrible thing I almost died but God kept me and I got born again when I was 19 years old and my life was changed forever 
So how are you living today? Do you know that you're, you're going to be free from death? Or do you have a fear of death? You're afraid to die. Well, that went out the window when I got saved. The fear of death was gone, completely gone, obliterated from my life. Why? Because I had new life in Christ in me. And I thank God for my pastors. I thank God for different people that helped me to grow in my faith. And that very summer, I got saved on June the 6th, 1980. And that very summer, God called me to preach. And I've been doing it ever since. Has your life been changed? I'm talking to people right now. You may not have been born again yet. But God wants to change your life. He wants to minister to you. He's got a plan for you, brothers and sisters. Begin to seek him. If you'd like to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart, that you will be born of the spirit and the power of death be broken over you, pray this prayer with me. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord God, I believe in my heart that you sent your son, Jesus, your one and only son, to come to earth, to walk the land of Israel, and to redeem mankind. You were born of the Virgin Mary. You had no sin in you. You never once sinned because you were the Holy Son of God. Yet you chose Jesus to bear the punishment of that cross. You became sin for me so that I could become the righteousness of God in you. So come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I want to be born of your spirit. I want all things to become new. I want old things to pass away. I receive you right now, Jesus. I receive you into my heart. Just wash away the weight of sin that I have borne for so many years, a long time. Take it away, Lord. Take it away. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I am so happy for you. I'm so happy because now you're a part of the kingdom of God. You have a heavenly inheritance. Learn about it. Find a church that teaches the word of God. Find a church. Churches are everywhere around this world. Also, if you receive Jesus today, I would like you to let me know. You can email me. My email is on our website, which is www.zion, Z-I-O-N, freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, fellowship, F-E-L-L-O-W-S-H-I-P, dot O-R-G. And there's a place on our website where you can leave a prayer and let me know. And those, those will come to me. I've received some, and it's always nice to hear. Praise be to God. The church is making a difference in the world. Now I'm talking to believers. Have you committed your lives fully to the Lord? 
Are you ready to serve him with everything that's in you? Just commit yourself to God. I'm not going to pray a long prayer for you. Just submit yourself to him and say to him, you confess to him the areas that you're struggling in. Those of you that are my people, you know you can reach me if you need to speak to me. God bless you so much. God bless each and every one of you. Now we all know we're getting ready for that wonderful Christmas day that's soon to be with us. I'm so excited. My son Ryan is coming up from a Tampa area where he works to be with us for about five or six days. I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be nice to have him with us. Praise be to God. God is so good. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his great peace. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. And I trust that you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful week. That you will walk in the authority and the anointing that God has placed upon your life. Let your light shine before men that they may see your Father who is in heaven. Let your light shine. Amen? Amen. Well, I love you all very much. May God bless you and cause you to be blessed and prosper in everything that you lay your hands to. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that your leaf will not weather and whatever you do, it shall prosper. Amen? All right. I love you all. Until next Sunday, may God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Bye, folks.